Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I wanted to do a short video showing how to use MATLAB's rlocus command to help us draw and plot the root locus of a closed loop system. Before we get started, I want to draw your attention to a few of our previous videos that discuss the theory behind root locus. If you're completely new to root locus, please check out our previous introduction to root locus video. If you've already gotten your feet wet with root locus, you might consider watching our video on understanding and sketching the root locus. Now, you don't have to watch this entire three hour long video, but in this, there were three transfer functions that we looked at sketching in there. Here are the relevant timestamps, and I'll leave links to these timestamps in the description below in case you want to just watch a few minutes of the discussion that's relevant to these systems. I want to draw your attention to these three previous transfer functions because we'll be examining them here today, and instead of trying to hand sketch them, we're going to use MATLAB's rlocus command to numerically plot the root locus of these systems. So, if you remember, in our previous discussion, we said that the classical root locus architecture that we were going to consider here is a system where you have a plant, G of S, that's your open loop plant, and then we're going to close the loop around this with a simple proportional feedback control of value K as shown below. So again, we said this system you see there is equivalent to a single closed loop transfer function that you see here, namely KG over 1 plus KG. The characteristic equation then was just the denominator of that closed loop transfer function, namely 1 plus kg of s is equal to 0. Now, what we did here in the last video is we said, all right, let, now that we know what the closed loop characteristic equation is, let's use an example transfer function for that g. So we used this one, what we called g1. It was just a simple system with a pole at the origin and a pole at minus 2. If you plug this into our expression for the closed loop characteristic equation, you get this as the closed loop characteristic equation of the system. So what we can do now is we showed last time how to kind of brute force numerically calculate the roots because that's exactly what the root locus is, right? It's just the location of all the roots of the characteristic equation as k varies from 0 to infinity. So I'll tell you what, let's jump over to MATLAB real quick and uh, implement a quick script to brute force calculate the root locus. All right, so let's go ahead and numerically calculate the roots of the characteristic equation for various values of k. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with our clear CLC close all. And now what I need to do here is basically let's start a for loop. Let's go for k gets 0 0.1. Let's go in increments of 0 0.1 all the way up to 2. How about that seems like a reasonable range. Okay, and I'll end the for loop and let's just fill in the guts. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and define the characteristic equation, which we said was delta, right? And if you remember, that was s squared plus 2s plus k here, right? So here's the row vector, which represents that polynomial. Uh, by just listing the coefficients. So once I have this row vector, I can use the roots function here, pass it that polynomial, or, uh, and basically get the poles of the closed loop system now. Okay, And now in order to plot the root locus, all I need to do here is plot this on the real imaginary axis. So I'll plot the real part of the poles against the imaginary part of the poles, and I will use a red X to denote the pole locations here. Okay, and let's put a title on this plot here. This is going to be k is equal to num to string k. And let's put the axis on to a fixed value of say minus 2 to 2 and minus 1 to 1 so that the axis isn't changing every iteration. We'll turn the grid on and finally let's pause this for a half second at every single iteration. And maybe what I should do now is before entering the for loop, let's start a brand new figure and I'll turn the hold onto that figure so we can just keep adding on to the plot um, with each new root for each different value of k. And the last thing I'm going to do here is let's put a pause in here for maybe three seconds so that it will give me enough time to grab the figure, which is going to show up on another screen of my machine, and pull it over here to the screen capture screen so we can see what's going on. So if I let this run, what we should see is we should see the root locus starting from a k of 0.1 and then increasing up to a k value of 2. So we should see what does the roots do as we increase k for this system. So I'm going to go ahead and hit run and pull over the figure. And hopefully it's going to start. There it goes. And as you can see, as K starts increasing, these two poles come together. They eventually meet. They smash together. And then they shoot off vertically as we start increasing K. So 
Here is one way to go about and compute the root locus in MATLAB is to just go ahead and write yourself a little script which brute force calculates the uh, the roots of the closed loop characteristic equation. And that is the main deficiency here, right? The deficiency is the sense that you need to algebraically determine what is the closed loop characteristic equation. In a lot of situations, what if you only have g of s? Oh, or I, I guess in our case, we were calling it g1 of s, right? It was that first transfer function here. So um, here is where uh, either the tools we developed last time, right, where we talked about you want to sketch the root locus if you're given the open loop transfer function, right? You can compute the angle of asymptotes. You can compute the, the centroid of the asymptotes. You can compute um, angles of departure. All of this kind of good stuff to sketch out what the root locus should look like. But... As you can imagine, that gets tedious for more complicated systems here. And now that we understand the theory, we want to use MATLAB's built-in functionality to help us. So MATLAB has a function called rlocus. And if you look at this, it says it computes and plots the root locus for a single input, single output LTI, LTI model here. The root locus plot is used to analyze the negative feedback loop as shown below. And uh-oh, this should maybe go a little bit clang in your head. Because um, if you think about this, maybe what we should do here is let me open up the let me open up the uh, help page for this. Okay, here's the help page, and let's compare this now with uh, what we had earlier in the sense of what we were analyzing. So let me come back to this slide here that we had earlier, and I will overlay this with the help for our locus. Okay, if you look at this, this thing up here is the architecture we were analyzing earlier and what the the sort of classical root locus uh architecture and here is the architecture that our locus com uh is computing so you see the the root locus parameter k is in a different location so we need to check ourselves before we wreck ourselves and make sure that this is still okay to proceed so to do that let's jump over to the whiteboard real quick Okay, so like we said, this is the quote-unquote classical root locus architecture that we considered previously, right? So when we developed all of those rules for sketching root locus and doing all of that analysis and all the foundation we built off was assuming this type of an architecture here, right? Which we said had this type of a closed loop, uh, closed loop transfer function and therefore this kind of a closed loop characteristic equation, right? So we saw that this is what governed the root locus when we developed it previously. So the question now becomes, MATLAB, when they provide the rlocus uh, function, they consider this architecture. So we have to ask ourselves, is there a problem here, right? Is there some difference? So what we should first do is let's compute the closed loop transfer function here for the architecture that MATLAB considers here, right? So to do that, right, all we need to do is just write out the expression here of, okay, the output is just a transfer function times the input. And I guess we didn't call this anything, maybe we should call this E. Right, e of s, right? Okay, let's just go ahead and make a note here that we see that e of s is just what? It's r of s minus k y of s, right? So we basically get this is g of s times r of s minus k y of s, right? So uh, distributing this through, we got g of s times r of s minus g of s times k times y of s is equal to y of s, right? Let's move this to the other side here. So we end up with y of s is equal to, uh, or sorry, y of s plus, I guess we can go kg, right? Since we're just considering a CISO system, the, uh, the order of the multiplications doesn't matter, right? Times y of s is equal to g of s, r of s, right? Okay, so now let's factor out the y on this side. So we end up with one plus k, g of s, right, and I can pull y of s on this side, is equal to g of s times r of s. Great. Okay, now let's just go ahead and divide through by this term, okay? So we end up with y of s is equal to um, g, uh, g of s all over 1 plus k g of s times r of s, right? Great, so why don't we call this thing the closed loop transfer function because it is basically this is the thing you multiply by the input in order to get the output here. So in this case, we see that this block diagram is equivalent to 
a T of S, which is G of S over one plus K G of S. All right, so you have R coming in and Y coming out. Great, so we can see here that these two are not equal, right? There's a big not equal there, right? So the, uh, the, the architecture we were considering is not equal to the architecture that MATLAB is considering in R locus. However, what's fascinating is if you just look at the closed loop characteristic equation here, right? We see that in that case, check this out, the closed loop characteristic equations are actually the same, right? So yes, these two are equal. Oh, I guess, sorry, I should have put this as equal to zero, right? That's a characteristic equation. So since the roots of the closed loop system, basically the root locus, right, it's governed by both the same characteristic equation in both scenarios, we're fine here. Meaning, all of those rules that we developed for sketching the root locus using uh, an assumption of this architecture, we can still plot it using the MATLAB command R locus, our locus because both of them are considering the exact same closed loop characteristic equation which govern the locus of all of the poles. So since we've now checked off and cleared that MATLAB our locus is totally fine for us to use, let's just jump back over to MATLAB and run it on a couple of these examples. Okay, so lucky for us, uh, the, they're the same, right? Both the classical control, uh, the classic root locus architecture is the same as this root locus architecture if all we care about is the closed loop characteristic equation right both of these will have the same closed loop poles so what we're free to do now is let's just go ahead and make a g1 object so i'm going to first make a numerator so if you remember the open loop transfer function maybe we should write that down first here just so we know what we're doing here so i think we said g1 of s was basically i think it was just one all over was it s squared plus 2s I think that's what you end up with as a transfer function. So, all right, the numerator that represents that is that, and then the numerator, which rep, uh, sorry, the denominator, which represents s squared plus 2s is this, right? So now I can go ahead and use a tf function to go and make a g1 object. So maybe let's run, oh, and I'm sorry, actually, this is going to take forever. Sorry, let me break out of this here, and let me un comment out some of this pausing because I don't want to sit here and run this animation every single time I run this script. So I'm going to uh, comment out some of these pauses, run this, and here we go. Here's our transfer function object. So now all I need to do now is use our locus to compute the root locus of the closed loop system here, right? So I'm going to start a new figure and I'm just going to say our locus of G1. Great, so now if I run this script, and let me pull over again, you'll remember this here is sort of our brute force root locus where we numerically calculated, and here is the output of the R locus command, and you can see they are identical here, right? So this is super helpful. R locus, you can see, makes a much nicer plot. You can see what's going on um, a lot easier, and what we can do now is let's start applying this to maybe a couple of other systems as well. Okay, so here's another transfer function that we took a look at um, in our previous lecture. It had one zero and then four poles. And if you remember from our uh, previous video, we made a rough sketch of the root locus and we claimed it looks something like this here, right? There were three asymptotes or zeros at infinity here. And the root locus had this sort of configuration, right? But it took us a good five, 10 minutes to kind of calculate all the parameters and make this sketch here. Can I do this faster in MATLAB or can I at least validate this sketch in MATLAB? Well, yeah, let's just go ahead and continue using our locus. So let's go ahead and do, how about example um, six here. So I need to make this G6 object here. So just to avoid me um, making mistakes when I type in with my fat fingers. I've actually got this prepared off screen here, so I'll just paste it in. Again, all I'm doing here is getting the numerator denominator coefficients of the uh, G6 transfer function here. And I, I, what I'm doing here is I'm just checking the open loop roots for fun. You, you really don't need this. Tell you what, let, let, let's get rid of this. Let's get this down to the bare minimum of what we need. So at this point, I make the G6 transfer function. I'll just go ahead and say figure R locus g6 again 
right? And again, let's run this now and pull the root locus over here. And you know what? Let me grab back the PowerPoint here. This is what we claim the sketch should look like. And maybe let's put the two next to each other. And you can see this is actually pretty darn good, right? Our sketch was very accurate. And our locus is a very helpful, handy way to go about um, validating that the root locus actually is uh, what it's supposed to be here, right? Okay, great. Tell you what, let's keep on trucking. Let's look at one more example here. So here's another example of a root locus here. This one was a little bit more simple here in the sense we only had one zero and three poles here. And last lecture or last video we discussed, this was the sketch of the root locus that should have been created from that system. So again, same thing. Let's just run over to MATLAB and do this in MATLAB. So coming over here to MATLAB, um, you know what we can do? Tell you what, let, let me let me undock this and see if we can look at both of them simultaneously because this might be a little bit more helpful. Um, okay, here we go. Let me put the let me put the script over here and we can look at this. So all I got to do is build the G7 transfer function. So again, just to get a little bit of help or practice, let's use how about ZPK to create the object g7 so if you remember zpk here is basically another way to define a transfer function all you have to do is define where are all the zeros so in this case we see there's a zero at minus two where are all the poles of uh, transfer function seven where there's a pole at zero there's a pole at minus five minus three i and then minus five plus three i and what's the gain associated with uh, G7? Well, in this case, it's just one here. So now what I can do is I can make a G7 using ZPK, and I'm going to pass it Z7, P7, and K7. And here, this is just another object which represents effectively this transfer function up here. So now what I can do, same thing. Let's go figure R locus, loc, if I could spell it right, there we go, G7. Okay, and I'm going to run this script and move this out of the way, and I will pull over the R locus result here. And again, check it out. The, the sketch that we made in our previous lecture using our set of rules looks really, really good here, right? They look very accurate. Let me show you one more cool thing about root locus here, or, or sorry, our locus here this plot that you make what you can actually do is if you're interested in what value of k gets you to some location you can actually just click anywhere on the plot and you see you get a discussion here with the gain so this is a gain of k of equal to 13.3 will move the root locus or the closed loop roots to this location and you can actually even grab and drag this and you can see as k goes up you see this thing going, you, you see how the poles will move here. In fact, you can have multiple points on multiple branches here if you're interested. The one thing that's a little bit maybe interesting to notice here is, is these are not all in sync in the sense that you would never have a pole here and a pole here and a pole here at the same time. These three points actually represent three different gains. One is a gain of K of 33.2, one is a gain of K of 35.3, and another is a gain of K of 201. So it really, to get an accurate picture, I need all these to be the same gain, so maybe I should try to make all these say 201. And you can kind of see this is one of the cumbersome aspects of this tool here, is that to get them all to be synced up is a little bit difficult here but it's definitely doable and it's a lot more flexible than I think trying to do this numerically by hand so our locus is a great tool here to help visualize the root locus of a closed loop system if you give it the open loop transfer function here right so I hope you enjoyed this discussion here. If so, please let me know below in the comments. I'm going to capture all of the videos discussing Root Locus into a playlist here so you can watch them all together and group them all together in case you're interested. So that link to the playlist should be in the description of this video. Again, let me know what you think about it in this comment in the comments below. We're going to have a couple other videos coming up still discussing Root Locus, one of which will address this exact issue we talked about where it's hard to keep the Root Locus or all of the roots in sync together. So that's going to be our discussion here on the Control System Designer, which is uh, shortly forthcoming. So I hope to see you at one of those videos. And until I do, I'll catch you later. Bye.